Hi guys, it's Sarah Todd. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about attending school with a disability. For those of you who don't know my story, I became disabled when I was eight years old. I suddenly became paralyzed from the neck down due to a rare disorder called acute flaccid myelitis or AFM. And I have clearly recovered a lot, but I still deal with partial arm and hand paralysis. If you want to know more about my story, I will link to my playlist where I tell my whole story in the description box below. But when I became disabled, since I was eight years old, I was in second grade in elementary school. It was April when I got my disability, so I was basically done with the school year. I had already taken all of my end of the year tests and I was basically ready to go on to the next grade. So I didn't really have to worry about finishing up any schoolwork from second grade, which was so nice because I really didn't need any added stressors while I was trying to recover in the hospital for two months. I came home from the hospital in June of that year, 2010, and I recovered throughout the summer. But then when it was time for me to start third grade in August, I was homeschooled for that year. This was because I really needed to focus on my therapy and trying to recover. So I didn't really have time to go to school because the drive to the therapy place was like 30 minutes. So that was an hour round trip and I did about three hours of therapy every day. So that really took up a big chunk of my time, which meant that I couldn't attend school in person. Homeschooling for the year actually worked out so well though. My third grade teacher that I would have had if I went into the physical school building came to my house twice a week, Mondays and Wednesdays, and she taught me for an hour and a half each of those days and I got the same education that I would have gotten if I had gone into the school. So that was really amazing and made recovering so much easier and less stressful for me and my parents because I was able to spend a lot less time on school while still completing the school year. I did miss my friends though. It definitely wasn't normal to do third grade at home, but I did go in to school for the class parties and kind of the fun stuff. And I remember one of my friends said, Sarah Todd, you only ever show up when we're doing the fun stuff, which was kind of true. <laughs> but it was nice that they still included me in the class parties and all of the fun events at school, even though I wasn't ever there for the actual classes and I did those at home. Even though this worked out though, I of course wanted to go back to school and be with all of my friends the next year because I missed out on that normal experience of just being a kid and not focusing on your disability and just doing what any other little kid would do, which is go to school and hang out with your friends. So when it was time for me to start fourth grade, my mom really made it her mission to help find a way for me to go to school in the actual building. I was still doing therapy at this time, but not as much at the actual outpatient building. I started having my therapist come to my house, so that way I had more time to go to school and just kind of do what any other little nine-year-old kid would do. Given my disability, I obviously couldn't go to school and not have anyone to help me throughout the day. My mom knew that I was going to need a lot of help throughout my school day just with various tasks. And since I was only nine, she didn't feel that I could rely on my classmates to help me because fourth graders are still very young kids and that would have been a lot of responsibility to put on a child. So I went back to fourth grade with a personal aid. Now this definitely wasn't ideal. As a nine-year-old kid, I didn't want to have an adult attached at my hip all throughout the day, but it really was a sacrifice that I needed to be willing to make in order to go back to school because there was just no other way I would have been able to go back without an aid. 
thankfully my school was so helpful i went to a public school so they were required to meet my accommodations so i had a 504 plan set up which is a plan that includes all of your accommodations for school and the school helped find an aid for me i ended up loving her she was so sweet it did kind of stink though because she had to leave in the middle of the year so i did get a new aid during the middle of the year but i loved her too and they just helped me with tons of tasks throughout the day my mom would drive me to school I didn't take the bus because we thought that it would be too much for me to handle in terms of going up and down the steps safely and carrying my things. So my mom drove me to school and we pulled up in the front of the building and my aide met us there every day. She would carry my backpack for me since I lost so much muscle wearing a backpack would not have been good for me back then. Now I do wear one because I've had back surgery. If you want to know more about that, I'll link a video up at the top for you guys about that. But back then we just thought it wouldn't be that good for me to wear a backpack. So she carried my backpack for me and walked me into my classroom. And from there, she was just by my side throughout the day if I needed help with anything. She would help me cut, glue, and tape things if we were doing a crafty kind of thing. She sometimes would help me write if I needed to write a lot. So she would be my scribe, though I tried to write when I could. And at lunchtime, she would help me get set up and open all of my food items and then come back and help me throw all of my items away at the end of lunch. She was also there by my side at recess, which was a little frustrating because I would just kind of hang out and talk with my friends. I wouldn't really play on the playground. I also couldn't really do that very easily anymore anyway, but she would be there while I was talking to my friends and she would sometimes jump in on the conversation, you know, just trying to be sweet. But sometimes it was hard to have an adult there when you're just a nine-year-old girl trying to talk and hang out with your friends. So it was a little difficult having an adult just with me all the time. It did take away a lot of my independence, but I really needed her there to get through the day. Going to school with an aide worked really well in fourth grade. So for fifth and sixth grade, I did the same thing, but I got a different aide every year. Sixth grade was an interesting year for me because that was my first year of middle school. So I was super excited to go to a new school and get to change classes and have a locker and just kind of feel like an older kid, you know? So we met with the administration at the middle school and and they once again helped to find an aid for me and they picked out a woman who helped me throughout the year. They also allowed me to pick my locker. So I had a bottom locker on the very edge of the set of lockers because we thought that if it were up high, I wouldn't be able to reach it. And we put it on the edge just because it would be easier to get to without having people on both sides of me. But my aid honestly helped me with my locker most of the time just because it was difficult for me to bend down and get all of the stuff out safely since I can't really carry heavy things or very many things all at once. But we picked my locker placement just in case I did ever want to use it on my own. Sixth grade was my last year having an aid, which was awesome. I was fine going to school with an aid because I knew that's what I needed to do if I wanted to go to school. But I was 12 and I really wanted to start becoming independent and I didn't want to be a teenager with an aide at school. So for 7th through 12th grade, I successfully attended school without an aide. I only went to this middle school for 6th grade because my older brothers went to a 7th through 12th grade private school that my mom and uncle also went to so she really wanted me to go to that school as well. Since it was a private school they're not really required to provide accommodations for you so she was worried that I wouldn't be able to go because it was obvious that I would need accommodations but thankfully they were so helpful and they were very willing 
to provide anything that I needed. Before I started seventh grade there, I met with the school nurse and we did a walk around the campus and she let me try out doors to see how heavy they were and they put buttons on some doors that didn't have buttons so I didn't have to worry about opening and closing them and they were just really helpful. So we decided that I could successfully attend this school even without an aide. At first, my mom and my grandma were like, I could totally sit in the car and do my work and just be there if she needed anything, which would totally not have been ideal or feasible at all. But they loved me so much and they just wanted me to be able to go to this school. Thankfully, I didn't need to do anything like that though. I just relied on my classmates to help me. I didn't know anyone when I went into seventh grade though, so that made things a little more difficult, but I just had to learn to get comfortable asking people who might not know me for help. And once I started doing that, my whole class, since it was a small school, I had like 200 kids in my class, they learned that I needed help and they kind of knew what sort of things I needed assistance with. So then it wasn't that big of a deal to ask my classmates for help. So from seventh through 12th grade, my classmates helped me throughout the school day with things like getting my laptop out of my bag and putting it back in my bag, putting my backpack on, taking the cover off of my calculator, getting lunch, opening doors, various things like that throughout the day. And it worked really well. People were always willing to help. I did have a few incidents where I had to like beg some people for help but that was pretty rare and yeah I mostly just had a really good experience relying on my friends for help. I think it was good for them because it allowed them to have experience with a person with a disability and it was so nice that I could rely on these young teenagers from being like 12 to 18. It was so nice that kids were able to help me. And yeah, that's really how I got through my school years with a disability. A lot of it was much harder than it would have been if I didn't have a disability, but I'm so thankful that I was still able to receive the education that I would have received if I didn't have a disability and go to the same schools that I would have gone to, especially the private school. Because like I said, we weren't sure if that would really work out given that they aren't required to provide accommodations for me. So it was awesome that that all worked out and I am a high school graduate and heading off to college. And actually by the time you guys are seeing this video, I will already be at college. So you guys can definitely expect to see some videos about college because I'm so excited to make videos about college. It's gonna be such a fun experience and I think I'll have a lot to share with you guys. So yeah, be on the lookout for those college videos. I know a lot of you guys have been eagerly awaiting those. I hope you guys enjoy those. And I am definitely going to be making a video about the accommodations that I had all throughout elementary, middle, and high school and how you can get those accommodations. And I expect to do the same for college as well. So I hope you guys will find those videos interesting and helpful because navigating school when you have a disability or a child with a disability can be pretty tough and challenging to figure out all of the steps that you need to take to ensure you can go to school and have everything you need put in place for you. I hope you all enjoyed this video and found it interesting and maybe even somewhat helpful. If you did, please give this video a like, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, and remember to hit that notification bell so you never miss a video of mine. I post new videos every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern and sometimes Fridays at 4 p.m. Eastern. So I hope to see you at the next one. Bye!